Jeff, it really seems like Brad was kind of the catalyst to a lot of things with the band ultimately getting signed because he was your intern before you even saw the band play. Uh, you guys went on and got rejected over 40 times, even with people like you and Danny Hayes and Scott Harrington helping out. So really how m much of an impact did Brad's internship have in the long run and what made you choose him as an intern in the first place? Well, long story short, um, I was teaching at UCLA, uh, which is uh, in, in a class that I actually had taken about six years prior, five years prior, and taught me about what ANR was. So I was lecturing in the communications department at UCLA, looking for an intern to help me with an artist named Macy Gray, um, who ended up doing very well and helping sure. a lot of people sure. uh, and winning a Grammy. Um, and Brad was one of the only students who raised his hand in that class and was inspired by the music, even though it was, you know, neo soul, not really his type of thing. Um, but he ended up showing up in my office the following morning. And I don't want to give away the whole story that's in the book, but this kid blew me away. He was confident, intelligent, slightly arrogant, but in a good <laughs> way where it reminded me of myself like that. You know, he was just, you could tell he was looking around my office, looked at a plaque of corn and a poster of Limp Biscuit, and just kind of shook his head. He goes, I'm going to have a band that's bigger than both of those. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, this kid, the, the ball is on Brad. And that's, you know, not that's how he got his name, Big Bad Brad. But, yeah, Brad, Brad had a, a very uh, large personality. And I instantaneously liked him. And to me, that's part of a star. Like, a star doesn't have to be somebody who's on stage, you know, blowing people away, screaming their, you know, or singing or doing whatever, you know. A star is anybody who can't, comes into your life and you're like, I like this person. I believe in this person and their integrity and they're authentic. And to me, that's what Brad was. Um, you know, he told me he had a band. He played it for me uh, a few weeks afterwards. And, you know, I went to go see their first show and I was very interested. I mean, it wasn't the best show in the world, but Brad had Brad not taken that internship and had I not involved Brad as uh, an integral part of learning and sitting down learning about demos. You know, who knows if that ever happened because they did showcase 44 times with our help, you know, with attorneys and, and you know, the publishing company behind them. Who knows what would have happened? But either way, I was very fortunate uh, to meet Brad and, you know, have the, the whole process start. Sure. Yeah, it just seems like kind of one of those chance meetings that turned into something a lot bigger. And that, that's how a lot of well, these the, stories the seem one to thing, go. The one thing that's really important that Rob and I always discuss too is you should always be aware of what's going on in your life. Like not to get, you know, metaphysical and, and all this, but like when you meet somebody always, you know, we're in, we live in an age where it's click, click, you know, swipe, you know, reject. We're doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. Take a moment to realize why people are in your office and what they potentially have to offer and take a moment to, you know, engage with them and, you know, make it, make a decision. Not everybody's going to have a lasting impact, but in the case of somebody like Brad, you know, I was literally sitting there and I'm like, I like this guy. I want to know more. And I literally hired him out of dozens of other people who wanted to intern um, and didn't even intern. It was just Brad. It was his personality. So Sure. Cool. So let's take a second here um, and describe what each of your roles in the business kind of are. Like what Jeff and Rob, like what's the difference between like Jeff's job as an A&R person and Rob's job as a manager? Like, can, if you can just each kind of describe your jobs a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go and go. I mean, the manager, I always look at the manager as we are, we're the, you know, the center of the world with the artist, right? And everything's off on it, right? You've got the record label, you've got the booking agency, you've got the publisher, you know, you've got every, the publicity, everything that's around it, right? The manager with the artist helps plan, put everything together, implement, susses out the good and the bad ideas, and you just, you, you have to just get in there and you have to deal with the personalities. When something bad happens, you've got to be there for your artist. When something, you know, you, you enjoy the good times, you know, don't get me wrong, but you actually have to be there and you actually have to be able to walk people through. Sometimes people get ahead of themselves and they want to try and figure stuff out. And you're like, listen, this is help, help me help you get you through it. And as a manager, you have to really kind of, sit there and help everyone understand as well as being a cheerleader and educating people. You know, like we were saying, there are a lot of people that didn't care for the band. I mean, including my own boss partner, Andy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like 
you had a lot of these things that you just like, okay, listen, just don't worry. We got this. Right. And I, I think that was kind of the attitude. Don't worry about it. Thank you for your opinion. We got this. We'll keep going, you know? Sure. And, but as a manager, you have to keep pushing that through and pushing that through, you know? Um, and, and it's, it's, it's okay because some days the bands come to you really distraught about things, even if everything's going great and you have to kind of walk them through the scenario. And then the rest of the time you have to, so it's a bit of, you know, everyone always jokes around that's babysitter psychologist. That's so much babysitting. There's sometimes you have to kind of talk people through things, but sure. it's really kind of being able to talk to people on a real level, being able to put everything together, being able to organize it all and then present this out to everyone every time mm -hmm. while turning the agent on to, yes, we approve those dates or not those dates. And the publisher, hey, can we get these syncs and get this going? And, and so it's a, a mixture of all that. Really is the central role. You're standing right next to the artist. Mm -hmm. So you've just kind of got your hands in a, like everything all at once, pretty much. Yeah, you have to. And, mm -hmm. and you have to keep an eye on all of it, right? You know, so, you know, it was, it was really a, a lot of fun, but it was pretty big. And, you know, you, you do need a team, right? If you yeah. don't have a team. If I didn't have Warner Brothers, I mean, I got to give them all the credit, you know, the way that we built this internationally. But by the same token, they had to listen to what me and the band wanted them to project the band as, right? Because mm -hmm. it was getting so, it was so huge, it could have so easily been a pop band, right? Sure. And you could have, and they could have ruined the band that way. It, it, it's, it's that fine line when you get that big right. between between growth and, and, and authenticity, which the band always had, right? Mm -hmm. But you're trying to turn people on going, well, that's, you know, that grew too fast. That can't be real. Well, that also kind of yeah. coincides with how Rob and I had to work together because I was more on the record side and had to, you know, work with be the cheerleader on the record side was Rob would come to me, you know, with all the, we, we dealt with a lot of drama, which I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll discuss shortly. <laughs> um, I rolled but, my eyes a lot. <laughs> it was interesting <laughs> times. Um, and on the A&R side, A&R actually stands for artists and repertoire. Mm -hmm. And, I like to think of AR in the old school terms where we did, we would discover and develop. And I don't know if that ha happens as much anymore. AR is a very different uh, animal uh, in the 2021. Uh, but AR, I feel like it's a blessing to out and discover and develop and nurture talent. And basically, I see myself as the guiding vehicle for the ability for the artists to have their vision, their authenticity, their truth and their message to be heard and to uh, help them reach, you know, have their message reach the entire world. And if, you know, we're able to do that and as a team, our you know, A&R and manager has to work really well together. Um, then we can have huge success if we, you know, the band does everything right, the manager does everything right, the A&R and the record label. So it is a, it is a huge team of people behind uh, this, you know, grouping. Yeah. And, and, uh... And it, again, and then you're dealing with a lot of people that don't know whether to believe in something as it's new, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna, we convinced a lot of people to spend a lot of money yeah. <laughs> early than they normally would on a band that no one knew what was gonna happen. And, and half the people were like, uh, this genre is going away. You know? Oh, yeah, that's a whole, yeah. we can talk about yeah. that a whole nother thing. Yeah, I mean, Lincoln Park came in when everybody said rap rock was dead, new metal is dead, rock is dead. I mean, um, but we can get into all that as to why they were rejected too so many times. Sure.